So let's say we want to do tiling. Um, so frequently when you're doing tiling, the reason is that you want higher resolution of something that's bigger than what can fit in the field of view. And so here's an example. I've zoomed into that same embryo that I was showing you before. And I am now at a zoom of 2.5. And I've modified a few other settings to kind of get a really nice resolution image. So let's say we wanted to tile. What's the first thing that we need to do when, when we want to do that? And so first thing is we're going to need to crop this image. And the reason is when you tile, uh, after you're done tiling, you need to stitch together the image. Uh, the problem is that for reasons that I go into uh, in significant detail in the lecture and which are also explained in depth in my guide, uh, the edges of the field of view, uh, particularly the left and right edges, but also the top and bottom and the corners, uh, are of lower quality than the middle. As a result, if you tile over a large uh, area, what happens is that you're trying to then stitch images whose edges are of poor quality. And all of the stitching takes place at, at those small uh, regions of overlap at the edges. Um, so that actually ends up making the stitching look quite bad. As a result on this system, it's a good idea to do tiling uh, with cropping. So not by itself with the full uh, size of the image, but rather with a smaller region. Now how to set how small a region you need, uh, that's a matter that requires some experimentation. Um, so you can ask us for advice. One rule of thumb is to use something that in terms of the width is not wider than the width here shown by this bow tie that represents um, how much the, the light sheet is changing in the Z dimension. Because from here to here, the width uh, of the light sheet in Z changes by about 40%. And that's usually OK um, as far as uh, for doing uh, for doing stitching. Um, but if you have areas where um, sort of if you have a, a cropped region that extends beyond that, uh, the quality may not be sufficient for what you need. Uh, again, it also depends on the quality that you are intending in your final image. So so this requires actually uh, quite a significant amount of um, of testing to, to make sure you, you you get it right because the, if you make a cropping area too large, uh, your stitched image will have clear artifacts. If you make it too small, you'll waste a lot of time because um, you'll need to take more images, which will take longer. So, so it's really worth investing some time in getting this right. Uh, I've discussed one strategy for kind of trying to, to get close to it in the X dimension, which is to basically use the edges of this. So if we were to crop something uh, here, we would maybe do something like this. In the Y dimension, it's a little bit trickier because the quality doesn't deteriorate uh, as much, though it does. So typically, you can go a little bit longer in Y than in X. But how much, again, is a matter for, for, for testing, as you, you have to do different options and then stitch them and see um, how things look around the edges. But let's say uh, this is a, is a good option. So now we need to crop it. So I'll go here click that button as I showed you before. And if I go to video, I should only see that region, which in fact is what I'm seeing here. So I wanna make sure I'm nicely in focus. Okay. And so now to, uh, to set up the tiling, uh, it's a good idea to follow the instructions uh, in, in the printed out sheet to exactly to the letter because the, the tiling uh, interface on this software is quite clunky. Uh, as a result, if you don't follow these instructions, uh, it's very easy to commit to make mistakes. So where are those instructions? There'll be a copy here in the room uh, with the microscope, but also if you go to our resources page on our website, so that's our website, this is our resources page, step-by-step uh, -step instructions, ultra microscope two light sheet, that's this, and then one of the pages, uh, page seven, is generating a mosaic image. Uh, so it says for best results, you'll likely need to crop each image. We've discussed that. Be careful with the objective bumping into the edge of the travel range when tiling at high magnifications. So um, that refers to this problem. Um, let me show you, I have a figure that will illustrate this issue. So if you have 
uh, a situation where you want to take images at high magnification, so you're only seeing a small part of the field of view, uh, and the white circle uh, with this blob is what holds the sample, you can consider the blue circle the objective. So if you want to move to an edge of the sample, uh, you may end up bumping uh, into uh, kind of the, the, the edges of the of the hole in which the objective can move. All this to say, if you're at high mag and you have a big sample size, you may not be able to tile it completely and uh, you may end up bumping into things. So uh, if you're in a situation like that, ask us for help. We can, we can provide some assistance in figuring out how best to mount things to make this work. Um, all right, so that, that was sort of the second uh, recommendation uh, over here. And so now we're just going to go through these these um, these steps. So uh, I'm going to exit that. You can sort of read through them at the same time as you're looking at this video. Uh, so in XYZ table visual XY, select the mosaic tab. So we select that. Uh, in set parameters under advanced options, set the overlap between 10 to 20%. So we go to set parameters, um, advanced options. You don't need to rotate. You do need overlap. Uh, so 10% is usually a reasonable number. Uh, if your sample doesn't have a lot of structure, if it has places that are very um, uh, sort of don't, don't really have a lot of structure in them, this may not be enough because the, the stitching uses that structure to stitch things together. But 10% is, is a reasonable starting point. Uh, verify that the lock button is closed. So this button should be in that position. You shouldn't need to change it. But if it looks like this, make sure you bring it back to the locked position because when you're cropping, uh, this is what ensures that the this overlap is respected uh, properly. If you if you're cropping and you have it like this, uh, it's not going to move the stage to the right position. So it's the default, but since it's a setting that you could conceivably touch, make sure it's in the sort of black locked with the little plus sign condition. All right. Um, so the next issue is to uh, go live. And now what we're going to do is mark the edges of what we want to image and sort of slowly build up the tile. Uh, so if we click on this button, here we've zoomed to the range of positions. OK, uh, this represents where we are right now. If I double click on it, you'll see I have some handles. If I move the handles, I can create new regions that I want to image. And by double clicking on the various positions, I can send the stage to those positions. I can move the stage either by moving it with the joystick, which I will do now so you can see, or double clicking. Or, and I don't recommend you do this, but be aware that you can, you can grab the red square and move it around. The reason I say don't do this is because it's very easy to make a mistake that sends the stage shooting off uh, into a weird position. So. Um, you will use this to kind of make sure that you're taking an image across the range that you want. And so you should be in a plane where the uh, the sample is kind of mac at, at its maximal extent um, so that you can see uh, where to set these limits. So for example, here, one thing I'm seeing is I'm not including the, the edge. So what I can do is shift this over a little bit so that now I have the edge as part of what I want to image. And you always want to leave a little bit of a safety margin because you don't want to miss anything. So let's say this looks good. And let's say I mostly want to image uh, stuff in the spinal cord and then extending uh, over here, but not necessarily covering the rest of the embryo. So we're just going to do this for the sake of, of the tile that I'm going to do right now. Um, OK, so, so let's say I, I have a sense of where I want things to be. Um, and more or less, I'm capturing what I want. It's not the entire embryo, but it's the parts of the embryo that I want. How do I, I take an overview to make sure that this is actually um, the region of the sample that I want to image. So for the sake of this sample, I'm just going to make things a little bit easier by switching to the 488 channel. Because as you'll see, the 488 channel, it's the autofluorescence channel. I can just see the sample a little bit better. Um, and I'm going to refocus here. 
And so this is not something that you need to do in your sample. It's just I need to do it so I can show you a little bit more clearly how the overview works. OK, so what are we trying to do? We've set the limits, but before we invest a lot of time in the tiling, what we want is to check whether this actually works. And so the way we're going to do that is as follows. There is no overview function in the software, so it's kind of a hack how we do this. So we go to devices, and we're going to set it up in a very strange way. We're going to remove everything from the list. And then we're going to add table X and table Y in that order. Then we're going to deactivate autosave for each one and leave split on. And now we're going to hit start. So what this will do, it'll look very weird over here, but it'll take images at each of the positions. Now what we should see is that the thing that we're imaging in its entirety of, you know, the entirety of what we want to image should be in the field of view. And we should see some overlap. So you can see the overlap right here in the x dimension, which should be about 10%. And you can also see it uh, in the y dimension. It's a little bit trickier, but actually you can see it kind of here um, as well as yeah, here, where you can see this groove and then the groove there. So everything seems to be working well. Uh, so now we're ready to actually take uh, the mosaic. So uh, just in the interest of making this uh, feasible uh, in, the, in the time that I have to record this video, I'm not going to take the entire embryo. I'm just going to take 100 microns around where we are right now, which is roughly minus 1,000. So I'm going to go from minus 1,050 to minus 950. So that's 21 images at 3 by 3 at 9 positions. So how do I tell the software to do this? So first we need to decide on the imaging order. So the typical imaging order will, will be we'll do Z first. If we had channels, we would do them after the Z. Uh, since we're doing one channel, I'm, I'm not going to bother with that. Um, we're just going to do it with, with this one um, to, to make it a little bit simpler. Uh, we would want X and then Y. So this tells it, do a Z stack, then do um, the X positions, then the Y positions. And you want to click on autosave. Um, so now we're ready to go. We just need to tell it where. I'll call this sample 2. And when I press start, it'll start imaging. So it'll go to the top left-hand corner, take a Z stack of 21 images, move over, repeat until it's done with everything. So I'm going to start this, and then I'll start the, I'll stop the video, and I'll start it again once it's done. So you can see it's taking a Z stack there. OK, so it's completed its imaging. What you can see now is if we go to the folder where those took place, where, where those were placed, excuse me, sample 2, we now have a number of files that say ultra2 channel z, just like before. But uh, so this represents the channel. This represents the z position. But now we have this 0, 0 times 0, 0. So this is the position in x, y. And here's something that's uh, really strange. But the first two numbers are the y position, and the others are the x position. Now, the good news is all of this uh, can be converted uh, to in Imaris, uh, Imaris files, which can then be stitched with Imaris Stitcher. So I will put a link to a video that shows you how to do that, um, so you can uh, so you can see what the workflow would be after stitching. Now Imaris is not the only way to stitch; it's not even the best way to stitch, but it's the easiest. Uh, better stitchers are uh, unfortunately a little bit complicated to use. Uh, if you need some uh, very precise application, let me know and we can work on, on how to do that.